Our game is brought to you in HDTV by Harris Corporation, the world leader in broadcast systems for high definition television. The officials are Jim Burr working his 15th Final Four, Eddie Hightower in his 10th Final Four, and Doug Shows in his very first. Drawing the assignment here, Billy, you notice some things right yeah. off the Jim, bat. the first huh? thing that jumps out at you, O'Bannon is taller than Powell, and he's playing guard. And that's why this Louisville team rebounds so well from the perimeter. And there's the zone. Two, three zone, Miles in the middle. Look for some penetration and kickouts here and what Illinois does so well. Long wingspan by Garcia. Tough to shoot over him on that wing. Well, that Louisville team in the top five of the nation in field goal percentage defense. They can put the clamps on you. Williams, though, open three, and yes, right away. Tyquan Dean, a real failing there. Defense was doing a job on Powell. He turned his head right back out. This Illinois team with five guys all in double figures in the starting lineup, as is Louisville. He's got to play solid. That hands. Garcia open on the wing and unable to match. It's head up ahead to Williams. You always like to beat his own back down the floor, and this Illinois team is terrific at that. Quickly. Tremendous skip pass there. I thought Head would take advantage. Head on the shot clock and still looking for something. Free. And they get it to Luther Head. They've knocked down their first two shots from beyond the arc. Jim, this team, Illinois, is shooting 39.7% from three. When you start making 40% of your threes, it is tough to handle. And how about how patient they were against the zone, letting that shot clock wind all the way down until they got the look they wanted. Bannon on the drive, comes up short. Again, Luther with the rebound. Nice job by Brown, looking behind him, making sure nobody goes for the steal. Not this time. Too strong by Luther Head, and Ellis Miles clears for the Cardinals. Little bit of jitters right here you feel for Louisville, don't you? And we got on the offensive end. And it's Williams on Garcia. Williams, who did the great job on Stoudemire last week, Back door, they go, and Garcia converts on the pass from Ovanna. Williams was taken to the cleaners that time. He went so wide on the play, lost his man. Ball can go inside. There it is. And it's Augustine gets the ball. Too easy, Jim. That zone has got a lot of holes in it. You can see where that ball could get inside very easily. Rick Pitino, a master over there, employing this zone because he does not have a deep bench. Tries to conserve some energy. When he pulled out of that zone against the great West Virginia shooting team, it worked out well in the man-to-man. -man. Dean, this is a three. And it spins around and in. And when you talk about zone being employed by a Rick Pitino team, <laughs> kind of surprises you, doesn't it? It really does. Of course, he made great play in when his years at Kentucky with that aggressive pressure and straight man-to-man. -man. Ball and a push off on Powell of Illinois. And how about the three, the big three, all first team Big Ten. They took up three of the five spots. Jim, the least that anyone averages in minutes is 32.4 minutes a game. It's amazing how they can play against Arizona as an example. 42, 44, and 39 minutes in a game of that intensity. Great condition. Ingram comes in for Powell. Three-point shot, doesn't drop, and it's Augustine clearing. That was Dean firing it up again for Louisville. Pretty good blocking out that time, making that rebound from Augustine available. Augustine. Well, with Ingram in the game, you've got another perimeter shooter available. Augustine with the glass. Comes up short underneath. And cleared away by Palacios. Got the numbers with Ingram on the floor. Garcia wants the ball and a skip pass. And here you see nobody really down in the low post looking for some screens to get that outside shooting going for Wilbur. Garcia, that's good, partially good blocked. And the ball comes out to Williams up ahead. Deep round. There they are, those two again. Jim, not only a great look ahead, but how about the way that Brown stutter stepped in order to get his placement for that layup? 
Very difficult to do when you're on a full breakout. How quick are those feet? Amazing. Inside, Miles, and bumped by D. Brown. They'll head to the benches. Illinois with a hot start. Four different players have already scored. They lead 10-5. Jim, here we'll see Williams and Garcia, but watch, there's a clear out that creates an open space for Garcia for the hit on the inside. A terrific job by Garcia, recognizing Williams goes over the top, gets caught with no help on the inside. Good basket for Louisville. Do you think Louisville has settled down after what you thought was a jittery start? Yeah, I thought they were a little tight, particularly the way that Illinois hit those, those threes right off the bat. Again, though, we see substitutions that are coming in for Louisville. It's amazing how much taller they are than Illinois. Otis George has come in for the Cardinals. That's Garcia. And George right into the game and one. They call him pure energy, and you saw it right away. And Jim, there again, we start talking about the size. George playing over the top. The Illinois people inside, and Garcia is such a tough matchup. When he's being guarded by guards, he can just get over them on the medium range shots. And the hack call on Augustine Otis George missed his first shot at the NCAA tournament. And since that time, he has made his last 10 from the floor, including 4-4 four four against West Virginia, where he had the big eight points. But just a matter of seconds before he got on the board in this game. Dean getting active out front, realizing he has got to cover a lot of ground because with Ingram out there, he can step back and shoot the jump. That's D. Brown. Let's see here. Garcia was battling with Ingram. They'll call him on Ingram. Ingram His first. Over, over the top. There he, again, Garcia, Jim, probably plays about two inches taller than he's listed. He's got the long arms, good positioner, good shot blocker, tough man to guard. Williams is on him. Williams with that superior upper body strength, but Garcia's awful tall. So 14 fouls on Illinois. None to this point called on the Cardinals. Miles trying to take it to Augustine. Good power move. That was Miles. He's the last remnant of the Denny Cronero, recruited by Crum. Of course, everybody knows he went down with that knee injury out completely last year. A solid performer on the inside. Had to sit out and watch the sidelines for 38 games, including all of last year, Ellis Miles. And as you said, the last player that Coach Patino inherited from Denny Crum. He would have wanted that shot. Williams, pull up jumper, short, and it's Miles again. Right now, you get Louisville with this size that's surprisingly different. There's a lot of times, until you see two teams matched up, you don't realize the difference of what's listed and how they play. And there's an example. Oh, George for the follow-up. Would have given Louisville its first lead. Garcia had, again, the wide-open look on those penetrating moves. Brown, corner, three. Yes. Can't allow that to happen. In the 2-3 zone, where is the man on the back line? Good job by Brown to find the open spot because he knows that Williams or Head will hit him. Hold. And that one is called on Darren Williams, his first. They're bringing in some subs for Illinois. Rich McBride, number 33, and Roger Powell Jr. returns. There's Pop. Jenkins for Louisville, his first action, Brandon Jenkins. And now you've got Powell, Powell on Miles, probably giving up two and a half inches. D. Brown, defensive player in the year in the Big Ten. Look at him go. Oh, and that was a dangerous pass. Oh, Bannon up and over McBride, and George underneath. Battles, and the last touch by Illinois. It'll be a little the ball. There's that strength of Miles. Even Powell, who's one of the strongest players in college basketball, certainly in the Big Ten. Miles stayed right with him. Watch this battling inside. Miles is so strong. Might have got a piece of that ball. Wow, good fake. Yeah, you got Powell to commit too strong with the lay-in. McBride gets it for Illinois. McBride, not known as a defensive player, but did a pretty good job on that play. Jim making sure it wasn't an easy put down. McBride down in the corner now, looking for that three-shot opportunity in the zone. That's Ingram. Turnaround for two. He had eight big points in the win against Arizona. Of course, his big game was coming in off of that bench and hitting those shots against Wisconsin. 
where this Illinois team stopped that 38 game streak. He has a beautiful stroke. Talking about Wisconsin's 38 game home streak, which Illinois ended this season. Miles looking for help, finds it in O'Bannon. Cuts to the basket. Oh, Banks at home. Got the jump stop on the inside. A young man who basically was just a sub prior to this year and has stepped up very big. Comes out of the same high school as a player who led Louisville to the championship in 1980. Mayo High School, Daryl Griffin. One of the all-timers in Indianapolis where they played such great basketball beating UCLA for the championship. Ingram had gotten away with over the back. To snap it inside. Miles blocked by Miles. Second, second to go. How about that pass inside by Williams? He really sees the whole court. Big 10 assist leader. Nice backdoor cut, very tough pass to catch. Just barely saved, Jenkins with the jumper. Hits the three! Jenkins out of Detroit, the sophomore. Hits a big three to cut it down to three. He was 0 for, 0 for 4 against West Virginia. Good comeback on his part. Inside, they go again. And not this time, for Powell. And another foul on Illinois. They're starting to add up. They are, Jim, and what's happening, these guards that are so tall for Louisville can get up on the board. That's the second on Powell. D. Brown from the corner. Line eye by three. Are well, you looking at Roger Powell Jr. And two fouls already on Powell. Powell, Jim, was uh, all Big Ten tournament as a sophomore, and then again this year. And it would be a big loss not to have his rebounding presence on the floor right now, particularly when you take in consideration how Louisville is getting confidence with their guards coming in to help out on rebounding. This Louisville team is tall and rangy. Speaking of tall, though, they bring in on the Illinois side Nick Smith, 7-2 senior, who uh, has seen a lot of action through the years. And, and Jim, very good against the zone because with his size, he's a good passer, can see over the top of the zone, and also has a good stroke. Yes, he can shoot from the yes, outside. Yes, he can. Giving them a lot of valuable minutes in his career. And obviously, very experienced player. There again, you can see Garcia has taken Williams time after time to get easy shots inside. That was tipped outside. That's George. Exactly bad as it was. It doesn't go. I think Garcia is going, he's given Williams a little bit too much respect because he knows that Williams is a great defender, but he's finding that he's open on those driving moves. I think Williams surprised at just how long Garcia is. Garcia trying to match up in the back of that 2 3 zone, realizing nobody's down in his corner. Back outside a couple of times, and seven on the shot. Nice, nice matching up in his 2-3 zone, this time by Rick Pitino. Front of the rim for Williams, and Jenkins skies for the Cardinals. There's another guard rebound, Jim. It's kind of amazing how well they're breaking in from the outside, getting those rebounds. Nice pace in this ball, and what Louisville's doing is somewhat taking the pace that Illinois would like to play out of it. Boy, that Beautiful. Just glides, doesn't he? George, though, fouled on the outside, and that'll be the second on Augustine. I think that Rick Pitino has to love what he sees right now by Garcia because he's taken Williams time and time again inside. Get complete final four coverage, instant stats, information, updated live, scoring, shooting percentages, rebounds, and more. It's all instant. Find it all. CBSSportsLine.com. They actually call this not on Augustine, but on Luther head. Nonetheless, that's seven now. Seven calls against Illinois. None on Louisville. George to shoot. I would point out something when you look up at the clock. What team is in the lead? It doesn't seem like that if you're not watching the scoreboard. It seems like Louisville's getting better shots. Dean back in and D. Brown for the Illinois side. And if I'm D. Brown, I don't go over on the side where Garcia is. Garcia is playing heady basketball on the bottom of that 2-3 zone. And with his length, it'll be hard to get shots off him. Brown has gone down to the right-hand side. Here's Rick Pitino basketball. A little full-court pressure. Just probably trying to take a little time off that clock. They drop back in the 2-3 zone. Illinois has not hit a shot from the field in over three minutes. And here's Brown over on the proper side now. Williams from the wing, not this time, and poor George. He really does. Dean said it this week, his teammate. He is pure energy when he comes in, and he has been some kind of active. 
And of course, he missed 12 games with a stress fracture. Then that really put this team that's not very deep in a deep hole. But when he's come back, he's changed the complexion of how Rick Pitino substitutes. Yep, they've been 20 and 1 since he came back. That's a very good move there by Illinois Bruce Weber. Putting head on Garcia. Getting Williams off. Garcia's hit only one of seven. Smith on the drive from Darren Williams. Darren Williams probably gets the ball from the dribble into his hands for a pass as well as anybody I've seen in college basketball in a long time, so he makes quick deliveries. 9-12 to go in the first half. Look at the feed to the big man, Smith with the basket. All right, folks, your chance to vote on the CBS Sports Line fan poll. The best game of the tournament so far, Arizona, Illinois. Jim, are we not going to give some credit for a team, West Virginia, that was up there for two of them? How about that? You could make a claim, couldn't you? I don't want to influence anybody's voting, but how about a team that is not in the Final Four, but is up in the two of the five best games played in the tournament? What a magnificent run they had. You can cast your vote at CBSSportsLine.com. Made it all the way to the Final Eight and had that 20-point lead over Louisville in the first half of the regional final. Williams back on Garcia. Miles looks corner, now takes it to the paint. Dean, right overhead, nope. And it's going the other way. Here's a call against Louisville. And the Illinois fans <laughs> stand with their arms raised. Well, Miles got into that new modern foul that we've seen so much this year, grabbing the shirt of Smith and committing the foul on the inside. He's got so much more power, he doesn't need to do any holding. So the first on the Cardinal side. And look at the wingspan of that 2 3 zone. A lot of holes in the middle. So far, Illinois hasn't put anybody on the foul line. Augustine on the inside, and the second call here on Palacio, second on the team, first on the freshman. Well, he was the original rebel of rock and roll, and don't miss the movie event of the year, Elvis, featuring over 20 original recordings by the king himself. It's coming this May to CBS. I like what Bruce Weber is doing, Jim. He realizes his outside shots are not going down that well, but there are a lot of holes in that 2-3 zone down in the middle. So when you've got the size of Augustine and Smith in there, good thing to go down inside and maybe pick up some fouls. They've been so uh, happy with the outside shot, that doesn't get you to the foul line. Augustine hits the second, one of two, and back on the floor is O'Bannon, the original five, in action here for Louisville. Down five. You notice there hadn't been a lot of pressure on the ball coming up court, and that is an advantage that Illinois has. I'm surprised they're not pressing a little harder. That's Dean taking it off the glass. And you've got the big guards from Louisville taking the ball right to the basket and playing over the top of the Illinois backcourt. Good pass. This has got to be ready to score. Everything he does so quick. Brown whips it over to head. Good ball fake by Brown at the top. Smith, Smith can hit that shot. And he's come off the bench and contributed four. He's an outstanding shooter, Jim. He had a game one day against Ohio State where he had six for six in the field, nine for nine for the floor, 22 points. He's got an excellent stroke. Miles. But he can't handle Miles on the dribble. Had to be shocked how open it was, the whole lane. Well, it's kind of surprising. It's good defense Illinois has played this year. Louisville has taken him off the dribble almost from every position. That's where the opening is, right in the middle. Sets up head. And O'Bannon again drops down for the rebound. The start of this game, it looked like Illinois was going to have one of those games where they never missed. Now, Head's having some problems getting that jumper going. We're talking about a guy who shoots 41% on the floor and a good hit. Oh, Bannon ties it. For the first time, the game is tied since we started. Not at a 22. Just inside, seven minutes to go in St. Louis. Rick Patino's team has come back to tie it. Aerial coverage provided by Monster. Today's the day, says Monster. And on this day, Billy, where so many are mourning the loss of the Pope, there is a tie in history. Pope and this dome. Yes, there is. In January 27th of 1999, the Pope 
had mass here. 104,000 people gathered. It's the largest indoor gathering in U.S. history. And it was a mass that those who had the opportunity to attend, I'm sure, will never, never forget. 1999, right here. Let's see if Illinois can come out of this break, settling down a bit, but another call going against Louisville. That's on Garcia. Not the kind of foul you want to commit playing that zone. There we see again. Dribble penetration from every position by Lola. O'Bannon shot, tied it. Jim, well, when you look at this major statistic right here, turnovers. Now let's break this down. Illinois has 275 more assists than their opponents in regard to turnovers. And then their, their opponents have 115 more turnovers than assists, but fewer. So here you have a situation where Louisville's doing a great job with ball handling. They haven't been upset at all by the pressure defense that Illinois normally puts on people. The only turnover in the books on either side to this point, an offensive foul call on Roger Powell. That's it. Hey, a little man-to-man -man defense for Patino on the timeout. Changes things around. Yep, comes right back out to Ingram, though. And Williams thought about trying to go back oh, inside for the think, transfer. <laughs> I think he should have, Jim. I think Ingram had a position near those arms again. That long reach of Garcia. You've got to be very careful when you throw the ball out there because he's not only tall, but he's long and he can pick it off. You know, this game is tied and Garcia's hit only one of seven from the field. He's had a number of shots that looked like they were going to drop. They dipped down and spun back out. You just wonder when he's going to get going. Williams, three. And again, that one's off. Dean comes in and he's ready to run. You'll see again the guards from Louisville with taller. And doing a good job from the perimeter rebound. Here he is for the lead. Garcia now, one of eight. I don't think you should worry, though, Jim. He's getting good looks. I know nobody wants to be one for eight, but he's got good looks out there, and eventually a player of his stature will make him. There were times this season when he was off uh, for a game like this, and he was afraid to go back and shoot. They had to convince him, just keep firing. Did yeah. turn around? And Reggie Theus, one of the assistants, had much to do with Trying to massage that mindset. Yeah, he had an 11 for 47 stretch, just 23 percent against some good clubs, Kentucky, Cincinnati, and Memphis. Well, D. Brown hits another one from the corner. Brown, Second time tonight. Brown so quick. He's another guy that's had spells where he just couldn't hit, particularly in the Big Ten in the NCAA tournament early on. But an explosive score. Dean driving outside. Another whistle here against. Illinois. How about the way the Illini distributes the ball? Uh, they just do a terrific job. They spread you out with the three guards. They are very unselfish. Williams, of course, sees the floor so well. The assist leader for the Big Ten and certainly one of the best passers that's been in college basketball in a long, long time. Well, he'll stay on the floor right now, Billy. He just got slapped with his second. Now, what, why they're getting into foul trouble, again, are these mismatches in terms of the taller Louisville players who can put the ball on the floor and take it inside. They're doing a good job getting onto this foul line. Dean hits the front end of a one-on-one. -on -one. He was the Conference USA Tournament MVP as the Cardinals not only won the regular season, they won the tournament as well. He had some ankle problems going into that West Virginia game, but Jim played 39 minutes. Tough kick. And he comes out. Jenkins replaces him. Well, Jenkins did a terrific job when he came in earlier. Not only in the defensive end, but showed he can hit that jumper as well. Full court pressure. It's been kind of just a camouflage type pressure so far. Not that aggressive. Side five minutes to play and have any concerns that Darren Williams stays on the floor with the two fouls. I think, uh, you know, Jim, he plays under control. He's, he's not a guy that that uh, makes a lot of mistakes, particularly in the offensive end when he penetrates. He very seldom picks up charges. Wow, that's downtown. This is an effort, and it comes up short, but right into Ingram's arms, and a reach-in call on Louisville. I think it's going to be Jenkins on the reach-in call. Whenever you shoot from that far out, all players should realize that if the ball is not hit, it's going to be a long rebound, and that time Ingram took advantage of that. Players should have been ready to go towards the foul line. His first, Jenkins, team fourth. Back to man to man now. Picatino mixing it up a little bit. And it's Ingram. Yeah. Oh, wow, the big man hits the three.
three. Good job by Ingram stepping out. Miles not used to having to go out and play a man that far out, but Ingram really an outstanding perimeter shooter. Doesn't mind taking a shot. His teammates have a lot of confidence in getting the ball there. 6'10 senior who's becoming a bigger and bigger star for this team is a sixth man. I'm surprised Miles didn't try to take Ingram off the dribble. O'Bannon, shot was altered by head. And the shot actually hit the baseline out of bounds. So we'll come back to Illinois out of the break. We will be selecting a Chevrolet player of the game from each team to honor their determination and outstanding play. Chevrolet, the American Revolution, $1,000 contribution to each university's general scholarship fund. And Jim, here we see the full court pressure, 2-2-1 this time by Louisville. And what's uh, great about Illinois, they've got 10 assists that have led to 11 field goals, 10 assists with only one turnover. Terrific handling of the ball on their part. And that's what got, got them in the lead right now. Their number of field goals with assists this year has been a really telling stat about what a great team they are in their own year. So unselfish, and they have good fundamental passes. Double up on Augustine, and oh, uh, Louisville. Cheap foul on George. Yep. Got his feet tangled there. His first, and the team's fifth. Well, Ingram stays out on the floor, so now you've got really four outstanding perimeter shooters on the floor. Man-to-man defense. Roger Powell has set most of this half, played only five minutes with a couple, couple of fouls. Head over to Augustine, too strong. Miles has it. Had the left hand, but he's a little bit too far out to take it in for the dunk. Would have been a very difficult shot to make. Why don't they get, well, they've got Wade in the ball game, Williams on him. I was going to say, why not try to pick up that third foul on Williams? He's got two. Wade wouldn't be the guy you'd want to try to take him one-on-one, -on -one, though. Garcia is down for the moment. And Lorenzo Wade has taken his place. Hold on, hold on. It's going the other way. And I'm going to say his last touch by Jenkins. Good aggressive defense by Augustine against the smaller man. And that's the first turnover of the game on Louisville. NCAA March Madness on the band gives you total access to the men's tournament. Replay all the games in the video archive. Get live team press conferences, game highlights, and more. NCAAsports.com or CSTV.com. Dean comes back on the floor for Louisville. Jim, Illinois, 288 steals on the year. You saw that aggressive and good handwork by Augustine on that play. Garcia back on the floor also. From the corner, head. And O'Bannon, he'll pull down some rebounds. Got another guard rebound coming in. George. Dean, a good screen. George. Shot? No. Good block out by Ingram on Miles. Yep. Moved him right out of there. Every time Williams comes down the floor, that head is up and he's looking. Makes such good decisions. That time, not to throw the pass inside. Louisville shows some man-to-man -man when they go back to that 2-3 zone. They probably played it 90% of the time in the first half. Nice screen by Augustine. Yep, George is able to get there, and Head gives Illinois its largest lead of the semifinal. Terrific job by Head and Augustine, realizing that Williams would delay the play. Now, you've got to put more pressure on the ball handler, or those screens will be effective against the zone. Cardinals in a seven-minute, or five-minute stretch, that is, without a basket. You know, Miles made a good move off the dribble. There's a nice play. Oh, Ingram, it looked like all ball. It sure did, Jim. It sure did. Excellent play by Dean, but that looked like a good block. Reverse dribble, pass inside. Well, pretty much all ball there, Jim. Wasn't a whole lot to mess with, Bruce but it sends George to the line. Bruce Weber over there kind of smiling. Letting that referee know the smile doesn't mean that I agree. Bruce Weber's brother, David, already a champion this year, winning the uh, Illinois AA championship. Quite a family of coaches there. In a most trying month yeah. for the family. One brother already with his championship at Glenbrook North High School. Talking about Illinois coach Bruce Weber's brother, Dave. Was their mother, Dawn Weber, died on the Friday of the Big Ten Tournament, passing away, having uh, an attack as she entered the United Center 
on her way in to see her son Bruce coaching the quarterfinals of the Big Ten tournament, only to uh, not survive surgery later that afternoon. It's been a tough month for the family. They've tried to move ahead, and do what they said their family would want them to do, and that's coach basketball. Smith. Ooh, did he get by with a penetration? Now look at George pluck it away. You don't see Smith put the ball on the floor very often. Pretty nice move. And Miles wants a piece of him here. And look at the go basket. Somehow works its way into the cylinder. Jim, I think that Miles can take any of the big men that are playing him off the dribble. Watch this move on the inside right here. He's got Smith. Takes him down inside, beats him with a little dribble, and then a terrific curl shot inside. Some shot by Ellis Miles. Young and man dropped 30 pounds to get in the kind of condition that Rick Pitino requires to play in this ball club. That basket he made was the first in six minutes, one second for Louisville. Three-point play, full court pressure. I'm really uh, confused in this game. Every time the team that I think is getting ahead seems to be behind. Here you have Illinois with the lead. Dean Brown puts it up quickly under the rim, and Louisville has the numbers. Dean, short off the glass, tipped out to Dean Brown. Now Illinois ready to go the other way. Head will drive in, kick it back out. Head probably had a layup there. Three second differential, won't matter, the drive will put it up. Augustine keeps the possession going. Now they can hold it for one. D. Brown takes notice, looks up, and he says, let's pull it back. Well, here's where those three guards help so much. Williams is on the bench because there were two fouls, but Brown can shift over there and play that point guard. Boy, Rick Patino just stomping his right foot as D. Brown launches. Three seconds to go in a half, and Garcia. Ooh, he walked. He walked, Jim. Well, he almost well, he let's hits see, the wait. Pick. Let's see if they. Nope. They, they, I thought they might put some time back on the clock. Won't matter. Half is over. And Illinois leads it by three. All right, as they take the floor for the second half, Billy, let's uh, review your game analysis. Well, I think Illinois has done a fine job from the outside. Maybe taking too many shots. They've already taken 19. They only average 22 threes a game. So they are really going to the outside with the shot. So far, fairly effective. Quiet stars, and they have been quiet, except I think Miles has done a fine job putting the ball on the floor and taking it to Illinois. And then when you start talking about Cardinals points taken, they have done a tremendous job. Four assists and only two, uh, one turnover. A terrific job with ball handling. And Garcia's not winning this battle at this point. No, he isn't. Well, Luther Head is uh, ahead statistically. Garcia just one for eight. Let's see if he'll put it on the floor and get that third foul on Williams early in this half. Boy, I would think he'd be the key for this half. Absolutely. Garcia, one of eight in that first half. That's it for Louisville, which never led. Outside, O'Bannon with the three. They come right out of the locker room and tie it. Nice offensive set that time. They used Garcia to take Williams out of the action. Dean with a hand check. Right at midcourt, Dean with the check. And let's take a look at the power aid first half stats here, Billy. Well, field goal shooting percentage, not much of a factor. I think that assist is very, very important in the fact that Illinois, although they have the assist, which have led directly to points, you see the points in the paint. Nice job by Louisville taking that ball to the basket, and they have picked up some fouls on some key players, but primarily Williams and Powell with two each. And that last whistle on Dean, his first. Louisville not in any foul trouble whatsoever. Here's that 2-3 zone again. The long arms of the Louisville players caused some problems there. And Darren Williams, remember, he hit the first shot of the game, a three. He is 0 for 4 since that time. Nice skip pass. Williams thought about it. Gets past Dean, who's able to help force the steal. Palacios, who has not done anything in this ball game, did a pretty good job defensively there. Quick shot, O'Bannon. Probably not a good shot, Jim. Nobody down underneath. We've got a flow in the ball game going right now. Tie score, you can get a better look than that. And that turnover on the last trip by the Illini, their first in 18 minutes. And Powell back on the floor. Saddled most of that first half with the two fouls. And a second turnover. 
Up ahead. Down, though. He's right, right there. And he reached in, and they got him with the arm. Boy, how about that speed of Brown? Brown saying, wait a minute. It was clean, and it was off O'Bannon. How about that hustle? Fine play. Brown, there, there's not but maybe two or three guys in all of college basketball that ever could have been at that spot. He is so explosively quick. That is his second, however, and that'll send Larry O'Bannon to the line for two. Now you have Brown and Powell and Williams, all with two fouls. And Garcia, who's standing right in front of us, ought to really be aware of that and try to take one of those guys to the basket. That gives Louisville its first lead here at the Final Four. England coming off of that bench right away. And O'Bannon with five points in the half, and the Cardinals in front. Talk about the zone busters, Billy. Here they are, the three stars, the three guards. I think uh, Clark Kellogg made a good point. You do not want to rely exclusively taking 60 to 70% of your shots from out there. I think if you're Illinois, you want to get the ball in the middle of this zone now that Ingram's in there or Powell and try to make some maneuver inside. Powell breaking up. Didn't time it properly. The line eye finding itself behind for the first time in this game. Second time, Powell broke wisely. Here he is in the middle. Oh, three on the shot clock. Had to take oh, it. He hits it to give him the lead right back. Had to take it, Billy. He really did. He was moving well on the inside. That's only the 48 three he's taken all year. So we're not talking about Powell, one of the zone busters, but he did the right thing at the right time. Miles looking over Ingram and almost took up and in by Powell as he was boxing out. The ball bounced up, but back to Illinois. Oh, nearly stolen O'Bannon. Powell, how about two straight? How about following the shot? How about that? Against the zone, there is never as good a block out principles as it is man to man. Powell, as soon as he hit the floor, took right off for that rebound. The Reverend knew exactly what he wanted he to do, didn't did. he? Oh, good lob. Over the top, into O'Bannon, and stolen away. Alana. And here's what they love to do, transition basketball. To the corner, Brown, he's only hit two from here. In the first half, and yeah, not this time. Now, Brown did not follow through very well on that shot, Jim. He got a wide open look. But that's the kind of game Illinois loves to play, transition basketball. Yeah, look at Dean, find a seam. Miles underneath, kicks it back out. Dean will take it. Fade away, yes, that's a two. Yeah, pretty nice job oh, that time by Miles, realizing Ingram had good position on him. Game picking up a little tempo here right now. Who's that good for? Well, I think it helps Illinois. I think if they can move this ball down the court quickly, they won't have to face that 2-3 zone in position. And Williams on the drive, and first outside Dean. Whistle for that one. Good second. Watch Powell hit the floor and come running right away on this play to follow up. You know, that's not something you see very often. A player miss a three and then dunk his own miss. Well, what he did so well, Jim, as soon as his feet touched the floor coming down off that jumper, he realized there was no block out, had a clear path to the basket. Smart play on his part. Powell making up for this time in that first half. Man-to-man -man defense. Powell blows by. Yeah, right by Palacios. Now, Powell, and this is what is so interesting about the Illinois team, and Louisville for that matter. All five starters score in double figures, so you can be worked on by anyone on the floor at any time. Jenkins, Jenkins drives, tip up Miles. Oh, Jenkins doing a good job coming off that bench in the first half, it's right up here in the second. Well, now with the last seven points for the Illini. That middle is open of that zone. Whenever Illinois gets it in there, something happens. There's another example. Well, reach in and stolen away. Jenkins bounces it over to Dean. He'll go ahead and fire it. And maybe shouldn't have. Williams looking up ahead. Brown was tempted. <laughs> it's Ingram off the glass short. Powell's taking over this ball game inside. Rick Pitino saying his pride level is right out of the sky right now and having more fun at this Final Four than any of the other trips that he's made. This is his fifth 
with three different programs. First man in the history of the college game to take three different teams to the Final Four. Only one of four coaches that have taken four teams to the NCAA tournament. Setting up a legacy that uh, could go unmatched, particularly if he could pull off be the first guy to win championships with two different teams. So Kentucky to the promised land in his fourth year. Oh. Fourth year at Louisville as well, but he sees Powell doing so much damage to his Cardinals right now. The last nine points scored by the Illini, all courtesy of Roger Powell Jr. And that's a man who committed to his school when Ron Cooper was the coach of the Illini. So he's been around a lot. The out back door, that was a blown trip for Louisville. They had it inside, and Dean unable to convert. You know, Louisville getting a lot of good looks, and particularly in that first half for Garcia, but he has not gotten untracked at all here, Jim, in this game. He's got to become more aggressive. And that's Ingram. And inside that zone goes Illinois. Instead of relying strictly on the three, they've gone inside, and they've really been effective. And they're getting some energy you can see on the defensive end as well because of that scoring. Still waiting for Garcia. He's got to put the ball on the floor and become aggressive with it. He's been much too passive in the second half. Good step out. He brought in George. Gave him quality minutes first half. From the corner, that's a three by Jenkins. His second of the game. Well, we've seen good play off the bench by some Ingram and Smith in the first half. Jenkins, I thought, on both ends of the floor has played well. Again, they go inside that zone. Tremendous adjustment by Bruce Weber here. Stolen. Here he is, Garcia. Cross court pass is too long. Ooh, that could have been the third on Williams. Puts it off the end. Francisco Garcia. Jim, that may spark him to realize he's got to become more aggressive with the ball. 17 minutes and 53 seconds of playing time between baskets. But he's on the board here, and the game is tied. You'd think that's a pretty good sign for Louisville to have Garcia not having this kind of a ball game. Powell again. He knows he's hot. He's got that feeling, and he hits another three. He has now put up 12 of their last 14. I guarantee you that is not something on Rick Pitino's scouting report that he anticipated at all. But Powell would be the man to beat his own buster. His scouting reports are extensive. Yeah, he said he watched every single game on tape this season of Illinois. During the week this week, Jenkins and a foul on Ingram. You now at the other end of the floor, in that zone for his defense, Patino talking this week about how he tries to activate his players. The stomping of the foot to alert his team that somebody is open against their zone. But you know, that may be a technique that he's using, but I'm not buying into it. You don't think no, they're, no, no. you mean they're not buying into well, it? No, I, you know, I think that Rick maybe he's going a one step too far there, maybe one bounce too far. How would you react to it? Firm step? Yeah, and if I was Bruce Weber and had heard that, i start stopping whenever it's closed, you know? You'd have a way to offset that strategy. Mix up the games from the other end. Jenkins will shoot one more, and Powell is going to have a little breather here. But Rick Pitino is kind of the modern innovator as Dean Smith was all those years. He will come up with some new things and new wrinkles. And away that foul, Billy, on Ingram, his third. Well, we may see Smith come off that bench. I'm sure those assistant coaches are going to point that out to Coach Weber. Smith had a pretty good, solid first half. Ingram stays on the floor with the three. Powell down after the hot stretch. And the shift to man-to-man. -man. Jenkins on Williams. Nice back screen, double back screen. Here's Ingram, takes the three. Head wants the baseline, and foul on Miles. And Jim, you were pointing out to me, hitting me in the shoulder, that Rick Pitino <laughs> was stomping his feet. Let me point something out to They're you. They're not in the zone. They're not in the zone. <laughs> so I think Rick might have been playing with the reporters a little bit. Obviously, he's getting, trying to get his players' attention. <laughs> and he gets pretty far out there on the floor, too. Yeah, we noticed that against West Virginia. Head, three-point shot. How about that one? And it's back up to an eight-point margin. Now, Jenkins handling the ball primarily, and Rick Pitino wants a timeout. And they called out with his hands, not his feet. 48-44. Illinois, 70% shooting in this half. That's Ingram. Powell's added the big ones.
How about that for the seventh straight year? We have a Final Four comprised of two teams from the same conference. And now for the first time, we've got two number one seeds there. Remember 93 when we had three number one seeds. The first time Tough since 02. We saw Bush Stadium there, the home of the Cardinals, one last year. Meanwhile, will this be a home for the Cardinals of Louisville on Monday night? And they're battling here with Illinois down four. Dean. That offensive set has worked extremely well for Louisville today. Good luck. Dean's got to make that shot. Back to the 2-3 zone. Powell remains on the bench for Illinois, as does Dee Brown. And Darren Williams has had a quiet game point production. Why sets up, though, Ingram. He gets the assist, Ingram, the basket. How valuable had Ingram and Smith been as the alternative shooters inside that zone in this ballgame? Well, I mean, it's Ingram. It's Smith and it's Powell. Who could have imagined it'd be those three? Well, I think that's a great adjustment by Bruce Weber to go inside the zone as opposed to counting strictly on perimeter shooting. There is a lot of room inside that 2-3 zone. Miles wanting it inside and he gets it. And the other one if you're Louisville, you've been able to put the ball on the floor, penetrate the score. Because he is not in the ball game right now, taking a little bit of a rest. I'm kind of surprised he's not out there because he just started to get some momentum. And we'll be checking in Palacios on the next dead ball, and he's had a quiet day also. Basically, the non-existent Jim, beyond quiet. And Ryan handling it at the top. Again, inside, and then the kick out. Oh, Williams down and out, tipped around, and Miles chases it down. Obana oh, will take it to the paint. Kick it back outside. Dean three. Good job. Good Senior O'Bannon understanding that he didn't have to take that shot. Down six just seconds ago. It's already back down to one. They keep clawing back, and they don't let Illinois get it too far out in front. Did he get the timeout in time? No. They say he was on the line going back to Illinois. Miles was trying to signal for the timeout. Didn't get it. McBride cuddled back and grabbed that pass inside. Luther Head hits it. Hey, Billy, the votes are in the CBSSportsLine.com poll. The game of the tournament, the fans say West Virginia Wake. And that one went on to about 1 o'clock in the morning. Tremendous uh, game. Chris Paul fouled out of that for Wake Forest, the All-American. And Theron Downey, the senior, stepped up and kept that game alive. Well, what would be your pick? You know, I think with everything on the line, I, I probably would have voted for the Arizona-Illinois game. How about you? We haven't seen it yet. It's still to come. Oh, it's still to come? It's still to come. Is that okay? Oh, oh, oh I like that. You <laughs> shocked me. I wasn't, I wasn't feeling that one out. Nice job. Hope. No, I would have to go Arizona, Illinois with you for those played to this point. And Luther head tiptoeing around midcourt, just fine. We've got regular starting lineup back in the mm -hmm. floor. Yep. Coach Weber had an opportunity to rest his guys just to keep them fresh and see if they still keep attacking inside this 2-3 zone. For Louisville as Garcia is still on the bench. Well, under 10 minutes right now. I don't think he can rest much longer, Jim. He's got to explode in this game if you're Louisville. Brown with five on the shot clock, back of the rim. And Powell's in the right Ooh. spot. Dean tipped it to him. And Miles got by with what could have been a foul and a three-point opportunity. Here comes Garcia. And Roger Powell dominating in this half. 16 for the game, 14 coming in this half. Well, Jim, when you've got a team that's totally unselfish, you've got a team with five starters at all average and double figures, any guy can step up and have the big game, and that's what Powell's doing now. Miles, room to operate. Dean, three. He's having a quiet, pretty solid game. As they well. need Garcia in the game. He's up and ready to come back in. They need his explosive scoring. Another three, and Luther Head delivers again. There's no timeout right here. I think everybody expected there was a timeout. Well, there was some debris on the floor at the other end, but Roger Powell, he's hitting shots from the outside. He's following up his misses. He's hitting the offensive glass. He's driving on the Cardinals. 6-7 in the half. 
And as I said, he's a two-time Big Ten All-Tournament player. Very much underrated. Solid. But nobody on this Illinois team, a team that really gets along so well from the standpoint of being unselfish, nobody on this team tries to play outside themselves. When there are opportunities, they take advantage, and that's what Powell's doing here in the second half. Right now, if Garcia has got to touch the ball, he's got to become a factor in this game for Louisville. Jenkins falls, Miles in trouble, and it's taken away by Luther Head. Well, he should have passed back. Wow, and look at Palacio soar to get it back. That was not a good play by Head. He had a three-on-one situation, should have thrown it back. Now it's Head on Garcia, not Williams. Williams had the two fouls. I think Head is a better matchup for Illinois. A little bit more in size. Sets up Dean, three, short. Faded on the shot. Now it's been this kind of working margin most of the game. Largest lead has been seven. Right now, it's at six. With eight minutes to go in the first semifinal. All right, Jim, I think you're going to see Louisville, if they're not successful, stop and get out of the zone and go man to man. Because Illinois being extremely patient, such a good passing team, they found the holes now in this zone. Example, Luther, he's hot, and he hits again for the third time in the half. Rick Pitino's got to get out of his own. He's got to go man to man. This Illinois team really is a smart ball club. Timeout, Patino and Louisville. Largest lead of the game, the Illini takes it to nine. Jim Nance with Billy Packer here in St. Louis and Illinois. First got the added fuel, the production from Roger Powell, and now Luther Heads hit three threes. And look at that, Jim, 11 for 28. Look, let me put something in perspective. The three-point shot came in at 87. Denny Crum said he hated the three-point shot. In the whole year, they only took 87 did Louisville. And here we have in this game, maybe the reason he hated it, Illinois has taken 28 already and have the lead. And of course, one of the first proponents of it, but one of the first men to really use it to his advantage is now the Louisville coach, Rick right. Pitino. Can you imagine on the year only taking 87 three-point mm. shots? This year, Rick Pitino's team is taking 886. And that's how he got his Providence team to its final four in 1987 with Billy Donovan. Tip inside, Powell brought down by Miles. Oh, great block by Miles, two-handed. And he is, is, uh, is Powell okay? Yep, they're tangled up. But it's going to be a Louisville ball. And both players are up there just fine. Cardinals will have it when we come back to St. Louis. Billy, you were marveling at how Bruce Weber, just in his second year, coming by way of Southern Illinois and a longtime assistant to Gene Cady at Purdue and one year for Cady at Western Kentucky long ago, how well this man can coach. Uh, he's done a terrific job, and you know, I really believe in his heart that he knows that he wishes Gene Cady could have had that opportunity to get to a Final Four. He uh, worked with him for so long at Western Kentucky, as you said, and then, of course, at Purdue, and Gene has had an awful lot to do with his philosophy. Well, this week he was uh, saying that he really felt like Gene deserved so much more than, than he did being here with all the years that Katie put into it, his great career coming to an end at Purdue this year. That's O'Bannon short on the three. And how about Illinois? Normally would push that ball up the floor. Very good job on their part not to throw anything away. They want to force that clock to be part of their team. And Williams pinned, so we go back outside. And Illinois taking a little time with oh, it now with a nine-point lead. This is a smart basketball team. How about Powell? One more time. Bouncing That's around. Nice. He's got everything going for him. Well, remember, Jim, the thing that got him started is that three-pointer where the clock was winding down. And since that time, he's been the best player on the floor. Here's the man that's got to pick it up right now if you're Louisville. Garcia has got to become active. Well, they're down by double digits now. First time in the game, and they have gone four minutes without a hoop. He's got to want the ball. Dean, top of the key. And Illinois. And look at this. Illinois normally off that kind of a rebound would be exploding. But right now, Bruce Weber says we've got something up above this basket that is our teammate, and that is the clock. Perfect. And George on the hold. That'll send Augustine to the line. The Illini has scored 10 unanswered. It was 50-49. Tuesday, amazing race. The teams race through Africa. The wildlife gets in on the action. 
How will they make it through crocodile-infested waters? You'll find out Amazing Race Tuesday at 9, 8 central on CBS. Two for Augustine. You know, one thing about Weber, you are talking about his success this year. All of that success has made this a very difficult week for him. Six times this week in St. Louis, he has had to attend a presentation involving a Coach of the Year award ceremony for him. That's an all-time good news, bad news it story, is. isn't it? <laughs> coach, we're going to name you the Coach of the Year. Hey, gee, I need to be at practice. <laughs> and now, Illinois just sitting back, playing solid defense, and if you're Louisville, again, I'm going to beat on it. Garcia has to want the ball, and he's got to penetrate and make things happen. He's being much too passive. Bobs it. Good pass. Miles, good hands. He puts it up immediately. And Dean trying to chase it down back to Illinois. So that basket breaks the 11-point run by the Illini. Now we're going to see Rick Pitino basketball defensively. Got out of that zone, picking up full court man-to-man. -man. And let's see if they have the legs, because you know this is not a deep team, to put on a, a rush run with five minutes to go. We've had some great comebacks this year. And double digits, four different times. Turn out goal by Darren Williams. Well, these were the comeback teams last Saturday. But Louisville's 20-point deficit was in the first half of that comeback win over West Virginia. Down 10 now, 5.17 to go. You can go to ncaasports.com, Pontiac, slash Pontiac, and vote for the Pontiac game-changing performance of the tournament. $100,000 on the line for the winning school, and you can win a trip to Monday night's championship game by calling the action online. Here we go, Illinois looking to inbound, and that one got away from D. Brown. It's going back to Louisville. As I said, this Rick Pitino basketball, he had to get out of that zone defense. Jim, we talked about almost mirror image of this game. They were down 11 with 5.53 to play against Marquette. They came back to win that ball game. Down 11 with nine minutes to go against Memphis, who came back and won the game. And then down 17 to Cincinnati, in the first half and came back to win, and then we all know about the 20-point comeback against West Virginia. So Louisville has done it throughout the course of this year, time and time again. And they were down four to Louisiana Lafayette with nine to play in the first round. Big shot comes up short, but Miles secures it. It's a charge on O'Bannon. Boy, if you Powell talk about it, Billy. You talk about the most valuable player today. How about Powell? Both ends of the floor. <laughs> Steps in and takes it. And knew he had drawn the charge as soon as the contact was made. That's the first on O'Bannon. Now George in, Jenkins in. Two team fouls in this half on Illinois. Tough to press a team with three guards on the floor, all of which can handle the point. Now, they do go back in the zone. Kind of surprises me. Ten down, clock. Not able to force any tempo right here, staying in that zone. Rick Pitino showing a lot of confidence in his primary defense. I think this is a tough team to go ahead and sit back on, though. They're patient, they pass. Yep. Now they know they'll have to trigger something now. It's Luther Head. And for the fourth time in this half. I don't like that strategy at all. This team is too patient. They've got too many good perimeter shooters and they're unselfish. I think you're gonna have to force some tempo here if you're Rick Pitino. Luther Head knocks it down with two seconds on the shot clock. Garcia gives it up and there. Miles dunks it all. There he is, Jim. When he becomes aggressive, things can happen. The head. He knows better than to launch it early. And now Rick Pitino holds up five and says, let's go man to man. Play some pressure. Tapping out of it. They're going to have to play heavy. Try to get the ball out of Williams' hands. Stop. There it is. Miles. Williams to defend. Miles gets the hoop down to nine. And here's where it's going to be a little bit of a gut check for Lobo. Good job on their part. They've got quickness. They are not going to have to worry about stamina now. It's a gut check time. Luther Head knocking down the threes. Four and a half. 3.31 to go. And take note, Louisville with two 
timeouts remaining. Gene Cady, boy, it's like he's on the bench, but he's in the stands in the Illinois fan section, cheering on his longtime assistant, Bruce Weber. And remember how we talked in the first half about Weber's brother, Dave, who won the state class 2A championship last week at Glenbrook North High School in Illinois? Anxiety over, written all over his face as well. It's tough to press this team, but that's what Louisville has to do. They cannot afford to let them sit back against that zone because they will just occupy the clock. Nice scribble. Yeah, Augustine showing some nifty ball handling. Lead the head, they leave him alone and blocked out. It'll still be Illinois ball, no foul. Down to 16 seconds. And there's another timeout, this official timeout on the floor with 3.11 remaining. Back with Illinois leading, thanks to Roger Powell and Luther Head in this half. Luther has hit six threes in the game, and that ties a career high. Jimmy just spotted it up outside the zone. The team is so patient, they pass so well. You give him good looks, and he will explode good in one. this half. Illinois is 13 for 21. Only one team all year long shot above 50% against Louisville for the game. And Illinois is right on that mark. They have 16 seconds, Illinois, on the shot clock. Williams takes too long. Wow, and gets, I thought that yeah. might have been a, uh, the five count. I thought so, too, but he got away with it. Called the timeout. Got the timeout granted. Tomorrow, a new episode of Cold Case haunted by a childhood memory. One detective persuades his team to reopen a 42-year-old mystery on Cold Case tomorrow on CBS. Here we go, 16 on the shot clock. And they inbound with ease this time. Gonna have to take it himself, down under 10. Cannon comes over, five on the clock. Dee Brown delivers, over the head, partially blocked, and George takes it back. Tough to, to get over, tough, tough to get over Garcia. Cannon's getting a little antsy right now, and there again, Garcia gave the ball up much too easily. And that one spins in and out for O'Bannon. Wide open, it's Powell, he waits, he gets it. How about that smart play? Realized that O'Bannon would try to go immediately for the block, but wide open is Powell. But there is Powell closing in on him. And Powell misses the half foot and rebound Illinois. And as we check the CBS Sports Line stat of the game. Three point field goals and six more by the Illini. Complete stats, cbssportsline.com. And Jim, in an NCAA tournament, whether it be in the Final Four earlier, you see when players are starting to recognize that this ball game, and in some cases for a senior, the career is over. Miles tapping Augustine on the back right there, realizing, hey, I've got to make those plays, and didn't do it. One and one, Augustine gets the roll. Up to 12. Louisville took a lead early in this half, and there's Megan we Weber, coach's wife, and the daughters. One more for Augustine. Louisville took that lead, and they held it for less than a minute. That's all. Augustine, who has played solid basketball, as we said, Big Ten tournament MVP, never dominates, but always solid. And they tied the largest lead of the semifinal. They've got 30 of their 37 in this half for Powell and Head. O'Bannon from the line. Thanks oh, it in. Didn't call that. Would have gotten anyway. And here again, life so tough to press this team. Point guards all over the floor, aren't they? They have to do, they have to try to do what Illinois did to Arizona last Saturday night. And I thought that Louisville waited a little bit too long to go into this pressure defense. Not that it might have changed the course of the game, but that zone strategy just is not working. Head driving, and he, too, will head to the line. It's Dean on a hand check. And this Illinois team, you don't get to be the number one team in the country and stay there basically for two-thirds of the season like they did without being solid at all aspects of the game. 
They shoot 73% from the line. And it's 78%. One Cardinal legend who uh, is starting to realize is uh, running short on time now. And there's Daryl Griffith, Dr. Duncan Stein, 25 years ago this year. He led Louisville to the national championship. And you know they honored that team's silver anniversary at a game in February. And Coach Catino allowed his team to stay on the floor and watch the ceremony and instead of taking them at halftime to the locker room. So this is more important that you see what it's all about and how the legend endures. And they had not lost a game coming into tonight since they were there that silver anniversary night. 33-3 and three that team was. Griffin, of course, the most outstanding player in that Final Four. And in the first round, they beat Lou Olson in Iowa. Garcia, that one slides off the back of the rim. Garcia having a nightmare of a ball game. And it was one for eight that first half. Had a lot of good looks, but he just kind of became passive in the second. He was two for ten for the game now. And both baskets were inside hoops. Outside shot wasn't falling. One Powell. minute to go. Powell is hiding down on the baseline. Well, I tell you, you can color this building orange right now. It is absolutely orange almost everywhere. You look as Williams adds two more. Total dominance now. This club is so smart. They know how to use the clock. They have great passes. Extremely unselfish. They're number one until somebody shows them otherwise. That's right. There'll only be one more game to do that. Miles inside, and there the senior, his career coming to a close at Louisville, fifth year senior. And the final 25 seconds, and Illinois is going to have an experience the school has never experienced in 100 years of basketball. They are going to be playing in the championship game. They've been to Final Fours, but never to the big one, Jim, as you pointed out. And great sportsmanship shown, which has been one of the qualities that have made this tournament so great. The kids play their heart out, and they understand it can only be one minute. Illinois on to the championship game for the first time ever.